the proposed protocol, Enhanced RID Oath. Routing is an essential operation in all network types, and it has special importance in ad hoc networks, because in such networks, nodes are operating not only as hosts, but they are also operating as routers. Therefore, any breakthrough in the routing process has a direct impact to the performance of the whole network. This is the reason why routing is targeted in many kinds of attacks in NAs especially black hole attack. The proposed protocol, Enhanced RID Oath, is a modification and enhancement of the RID Oath protocol proposed in. RID Oath protocol was proposed as combination of previous two protocols, namely, ITSAID, which is proposed in, and RAID, proposed in, as mentioned in the previous section. Therefore, we got all the advantages of the preceding protocols in mitigating the bad impact of the existence of malicious black hole nodes in the ad hoc network. Thus, better results in terms of performance metrics. The detection of the malicious nodes and mitigation their effects can be achieved by creating and maintaining dynamic blacklist in each node according to some criteria. Then each non-malicious node will prevent sending or forwarding to the neighboring nodes that exist in its own blacklist either in the forward or reverse path. In other words, each node will not use blacklisted nodes as intermediate nodes. Dynamic blacklist means that each node adds and removes nodes to or from its blacklist automatically according to specific criteria as will be explained in this section. The criteria for each node to add another node's address in its blacklist is the repetitive mismatch in the hash value of the receiving frames, layer 2 frame, from the same neighboring node. So, each node keeps a counter for each other node that receives a frame from the neighboring nodes. If there is a mismatch between the received hash value and the calculated value, the corresponding counter for the sending, or forwarding, node will be incremented. When the counter reaches some threshold value, mal PCKT threshold, then the corresponding neighboring node will be blacklisted. Each node keeps small number of counters. If node NI has P neighboring nodes, P is of all nodes, and NI is receiving from Q nodes, keys off, then NI will keep only Q counters for this purpose. In addition, we can get another advantage of the nature of the reverse route discovery procedure in RAID to create full path bidirectional integrity check implemented in hop by hop assist to detect any modifications on the traversing packets and to detect the causing nodes. To distinguish between hash value mismatch that may occur as a result of normal link failure, which is from the nature of menace due to mobility of nodes that communicate wirelessly or from the existence of malicious nodes, the threshold value mal PCKT threshold should be considered as a function of mobility, variable threshold. If the node is moving with relatively high speed, the mismatch of hash values is most likely due to normal link failure, and so the threshold should be high. On the other hand, if there are many hash value mismatches while the node is moving slowly, there is most likely a malicious node. So, the value of mal PCKT threshold is directly proportional to the node speed, and it was implemented by using, 1. Where C is the threshold value when the node speed is 0. The malicious node may not act as a black hole all the time, it may become benign for some period of time, then it may, or may not, resume its malicious activities. So, when a node adds another node's address to its blacklist, the blacklisted node will not stay in its blacklist forever. However, it will be blacklisted for a previously specified period of time, so, when a node is added to another node's blacklist, not only the address of the blacklist is added but also the expiry time for that node to be released from that blacklist. The blacklisted node expiry time is computed using, 2. Each time the node wants to send, or forward, a packet to a neighboring node, it will check if it is blacklisted, and if so it will also check the expiry time for that node. If it's expired, it will be removed from the blacklist of that node, and its corresponding counter and expiry timer will be reset. Because of that it is a dynamic blacklist. When a node wants to send, or forward, a packet, in either the forward path or reverse path, it will check the routing table to decide what is the next hop. Then it will check if the next hop is blacklisted or not, if it's blacklisted, it will check the blacklist expiry time. If the next hop node is still blacklisted, then the node will remove that node from its neighbor list and run the handle link failure procedure. Then the node will try to send, or forward, the packet by using another path. As a result, we can get a secure path that avoids the black hole malicious nodes during routing packet as shown in. Secure routing path. 
The criterion for the reverse path is the round trip time, RTT. RTT is the length of time it takes the rec to be sent, or forwarded, plus the length of time it takes for the R rec to be received by the node. As we assume that all the nodes are trusted, we can measure RTT in the normal behavior and use it as a reference. Any change in this value indicates that the reply was not from the original destination, so this value can be used to detect the malicious node. The node will first measure round trip time, RTT. Then it will calculate the average hop to hop time, TH minus H, using 3. Now, the new RTT, RTT next, should satisfy the following condition. The sequence diagram of the enhanced RID OV protocol is shown in. RTT values are shown in normal behavior and in malicious behavior. Sequence diagram for the enhanced RID OV. In our protocol we used one-way hashing function on the level of packets in the routing discovery control messages. The purpose of using a hash function is to produce a fingerprint of the message. This fingerprint will be used for route request, RREQ, packet authentication and integrity check in each hop while traversing from source node to the destination node and for reverse route request, RREC, from destination to source, resulting in a two-way, bidirectional, control packet authentication and integrity check. To implement the enhanced RID OAT protocol, a new field was added in the route request, RREQ, and reverse route request, RREC. The pseudocodes for the enhanced RID OAT protocol are presented in figures 4, 5, 6. Pseudocode for the proposed protocol, how the node decides to add other nodes in its blacklist. Pseudocode for the proposed protocol, how the node decides to remove a node from its blacklist. Pseudocode for the proposed protocol, how the node behaves when sending or forwarding a packet. The flowchart for the enhanced RID OAT protocol is illustrated in Flowchart of the enhanced RID OAT protocol